and I'm ready to fangirl, but we're, we're not there yet. I'm a, literally a ball of anxiety. Like, how am I gonna get through the last three hours of this book? Literally, I like slapped my face. And now, I don't know how I feel, I can't talk. Maybe I should just not film this until tomorrow, but. Hi everybody, I am currently at my parents' house. I have Miss Darcy right in front of me. I just showed her. Look at look at how cute she is. Hi, sweetie. I know she gets a little clingier when I'm at my parents' house because there's five dogs. So she's like, you're mine. So does Lily. Lily's all over me normally. Lily's right over there. We have Eva there. Bailey just went upstairs. Not sure where Gigi went. I'm at my parents' house because they are visiting my nephew this weekend. They're babysitting while my brother and my sister-in-law are at a wedding. And they live two hours away, so they're gonna spend the night. I'm here with all the dogs by myself because my sister worked last night and I'm super excited. The Ohio State game's on right now. Ohio State is playing Youngstown State don't think it's gonna be a close game, but I am here because I'm going to start Manicold. I'm very excited. I have my Kindle here. It's not open to Manicold yet, but I'm gonna read it, and my goal is to finish it this weekend. It is 12.20 in the afternoon, so I have no plans. I already edited my video for Monday, so editing is done, and Miss Darcy's the cutest face on the planet. She's just chilling against me now. She's so cute. But I'm very excited. I do want to get into Germione fan fiction. And I know Tori read it recently and she was obsessed. And I've just been seeing it all over my TikTok now. So I feel left out. So I want to read it. And I was worried I was starting too big. So I asked my patrons. I gave them three options. I have like six downloaded to my Kindle. And I said, which should I start? I really want to read Julie Soto's Forget Me Not. That's one of my favorite books of the year and she wrote the auction but she told me when i saw her in california that i should read i saw her at steamy at the signing she said that i should start with do the right thing i'm pretty sure it's which that one is called unless that's the movie that i'm thinking of you know that movie i've had to watch it a few times in film studies classes but i'm very excited they voted for manacled no surprise so i'm gonna be reading manacled this weekend hopefully i enjoy it i'm gonna do one of those tiktoks where it's like this is me before manacled and then this is me after reading manacled because apparently people cry at the end so it's very long but we'll see how it goes you excited you excited she is she's acting like she's not miss lily is too the game will be on in the background while i start reading this and pray for me because i'm scared Not the best lighting, but we're gonna do what we're gonna do. TV's not behind me. I just wanna say hi to my puppies. You're right next to Darcy's face. But I'm still reading Manicold. I'm 3% in, so I haven't read too much. I took like a wee little nap because it's the afternoon. On weekends in the afternoon, I got a little tired, especially if I'm sitting there reading and just like sitting around all day. So the book is so good though. So the premise is they've lost the war and Voldemort is basically like ruling everybody. And so what's really hard for me, I love the movies and I read all the books when I was younger. So I think middle school, I know she sniffed that out. I was eating a protein bar <laughs> and I left it over there to come back to. Lily didn't touch it and Darcy immediately jumped up. I know Gigi, you're a good girl. Anyways, I read all the books in middle school and watched most of the movies multiple times i've seen one through four the most like a million times i can like quote those so i know the story pretty well i haven't read or watched the later ones as often i think i reread <laughs> this is bailey i think i reread the sixth one right before the movie came out and i felt like that ruined the movie experience for me because it has changed so much so i didn't reread any of them after that and i don't watch the last movies because they're so sad so i've only seen them once or twice so i don't know too much about a lot of the background of like that kind of magic so like the mind magic they're talking about because i remember them dealing a lot with memories and stuff in some of the books but i don't remember i don't remember a lot about that so they did talk about that a little bit so hermione's been kept prisoner for 16 months 
by Umbridge and like the dark people and they finally realized that she was there so she took her out and she has like protected memories of things that happened after the war so Harry's dead Ron's dead all the Weasleys are dead Lupin is dead Tonks like everybody's dead and like we slowly get tidbits of how each of them died and it's horrific so Hermione's alive and she is being held captive and they're starting this breeding program because they want to breed magical children they wanted to pair pure bloods with pure bloods but they're having a really hard time having babies so it's very handmaid's tale and now they have a program where these women with hermione who are either half blood or have muggle parents are being put into these households to breed with the husband so she is being assigned to the high reeves someone it's gonna be a draco but the like second in command to Voldemort, the like most powerful guy there because someone brought up that if you have a baby that can weaken like mind magic so they want her to get pregnant to weaken her magic and so that draco can infiltrate her mind and get these memories so that is the premise of manacled I just knew it was Handmaid's Tale-ish, but it's so good so far. I love magic. I love fantasy. And so these characters are so fleshed out. And I don't know why, like, fan fiction writers are so talented. And they are doing it for free. Legally, they are not allowed to make money off of their fan fiction unless they change it and republish it. So I would not be surprised if Manacled ended up being bought by a publisher and changed. But I don't know how I would do that because it's so ingrained in like Harry Potter lore and like magic. But we'll see. So it's very dark. They are now being assigned to families. So we'll see her being assigned to this guy. And I'm interested to see how she feels when she realizes that it's Draco. We've seen Snape. And it's just very interesting and very engrossing. Like very dark. Like, obviously dark things are going to happen, but we'll see how it goes. I don't know how long it is. It says it's going to take me 15 hours to read. So it does not tell me the page numbers on my Kindle. We'll see how it goes. Hi, you can probably hear a dinner boiling. I'm making some pasta for myself. When I'm home alone and I have to make dinner for myself, I always have corkscrew pasta with butter and cheese and it is my favorite thing ever, so do not judge me. But I am 16% in. This is the photo that shows up on my Kindle when I'm reading it. I don't know why, I downloaded it from AO3, so I did have the normal manacled cover though there. But now I've realized I understand the paper crane reference. That was pretty early on. I'm 16% in and it's five o'clock. I feel like I've been reading forever, but I haven't. I mean, like I said, I took a little bit of a nap at two, but I had to feed the dogs and I'm making my own dinner, but I think it's slow in the beginning. And I feel like there's like, I'm like, give me some romance. I am dying here. But we are finally uncovering things about like Voldemort and stuff. So I feel like the plot's picking up. It was just like 15% of her having to go live with the Malfoys and having panic attacks and trying to overcome her fear after being in prison for 16 months and exploring. So that's really it. I do get a sense that Malfoy's hiding something and I have a theory. I don't know if it's right, but we'll see if it's right. I don't want to spoil anything. So I'm trying to keep this spoiler free. I just told you the synopsis and just things generally that are happening, but I'm trying not to spoil too much for you guys. Maybe I'll do a spoilery thing at the end where like really good at spoilers, but I know Draco and Hermione are going to fall in love, but he can do something that I thought was really interesting. Again, don't want to spoil that, but I was wondering if like it can be reversed and if Hermione's tried that, because Hermione's very clever. She's also like slowly uncovering some memories through dreams, which is very interesting to see how those differ from what happened in the book. Because right now I don't think she even had a relationship with Ron, unless she's hiding that from herself. Like, they thought she was hooking up with Snape. <laughs> she's like, no, I'm studying under him. Like, she was studying potions. So she had a conversation with Ron, and like, I don't think they were together, which is very interesting. So we'll see how this continues to go. I'm gonna continue reading, have my dinner, and then read for the rest of the night. Like, maybe another five hours. We'll see if I can do that, because I wanna get halfway through this book tonight. But my goal is to be like 60% of the way through this book, but we'll see. I looked on Goodreads, and I think it's like eight or 900 pages. I couldn't get like a complete page count because my only has says loc at the bottom which is very annoying when i get books that do that i want to know the page number but it's okay i'm gonna go finish cooking my dinner eat some dinner and read some more 
Malfoy saved her. Mm. He is for sure hiding something, I don't know what, but I got to a part where he saved her from something. And she said, what did she say? Malfoy always comes for me. So, we're getting there. We are getting there, I'm feeling it, and I'm ready to fangirl. But we're, we're not there yet, so I had to be patient. But I do have Pup Pups with me. I have Miss Lily and Miss Eva is right there next to her. Hi, Eva. Um, we're just hanging now, so I'm going to go back to reading. Okay, I'm going to say something spoilery. So don't don't listen if you haven't read or if you want the spoilers. Um, you can say. I'll put spoiler here and take it off when I'm done. He, he killed Graham because he touched Hermione. This is the man his wife has been having an affair with. Did not bat an eye, but the second he touches Hermione, he kills him. Oh my God, oh my God, okay, okay. Literally, that's the only thing he's done and I'm already like fangirling so hard. It's okay, we're gonna continue. The way I just read that entire scene was like, I never know. I know, I know. I shut the door because there's someone mowing their lawn and she is desperate to go out. You don't have to actually go potty. I know you don't. She just wants to go outside. The way he held her face. Okay, spoiler here. <laughs> so, Astoria tried to take her eyeball out. He apparates across the continent to get to her. Heals her. Heals her, and she has to help. And now I want him to kill his wife. Is he gonna kill his wife? I don't think he'll kill his wife. I want him to kill his wife badly, but I don't think he will. But then he killed a Death Eater for her already. Excuse me? Okay, so while the first like 17% of this book is very slow, we are getting a Draco Malfoy who is not unaffected by Hermione Granger. Okay, that's all I have to say. Hermione took a potion and things happened. This book. This book. I just got to the first flashback. It's like it gets slow and then all of a sudden you're like, what, what? What? So this is gonna be a spoiler. Were her and Draco already together? Cause he says, if something happens to you, I will personally raise the entire order. That isn't a threat, it's a promise. Consider your survival as much a necessity to the survival of the resistance as Potters. If you die, I will kill every last one of them. I think he was helping the resistance somehow, and I think that him and Hermione were already in love. How is the amnesia trope not elite to everybody? This is basically the amnesia trope. So now we have a flashback. I have no idea what's going to happen. No idea. Good morning. Um, it is... <laughs> Lily's next to me. It is Sunday morning today. Oh my gosh, the pups are so tired. They're so cute. They were so good for me last night. All of them took turns cuddling against me. It was so cute. Darcy mainly was cuddling against me. And then I woke up and let them out. At six. They let me sleep until six. Normally they wake my parents up at like five. And let them all out. Fed them all. And then brought them all back to bed. And I left the door open. And they all stayed in bed with me. So we slept for about an hour or more. And then I went for my run. Which they were all really good while I was gone. No one ate anything. Which Bailey's the only one I'm concerned about leaving alone. The other ones are fine. Left outside of their kennels. But then I showered, had some tea, and I'm now 46% into the book. It'll take me forever to read. I think it's because the plot is slow, and for me, when a plot is slow, I read slow, because I get bored. If a plot is fast, I start reading faster to like get, I'm like so excited, excuse you. And so, this one I'm reading very slowly. So I'm 46% in, the plot's so slow. I'm still in the flashbacks, it's like flashback 18. So I'm liking the flashbacks, but I, they left us at such a cliffhanger in the present that I'm like, 
I need to go back. So I'm, I'm kind of frustrated in that point. From the glimpses that we've had of Draco in the present, I feel like this is going to be such an angsty romance. But we kind of got ripped from that plot and thrown into the past. And we are seeing things that are like developing the romance more. I'm, I'm a little bored. I know people are obsessed with this book. I just saw a TikTok of someone's tattoo for this book. And I just feel like it's going to be like an all-consuming crazy romance. But there's just so much mundane plot. And maybe it's because this was all just written by someone putting it on the internet. There's like, I don't know if she's ever had it edited before. But I'm just like, I don't need all these little things happening, you know? So I'm still enjoying it. But I'm only halfway through and I feel like I've been reading for like 24 hours. It says I have eight and a half hours left of reading. Which kind of aligns with, it told me it would take me 15 hours. So it's like a little more than what I originally said it would take me. But... I don't know how far I am, like how long this book actually is. I'm gonna leave my parents' house now, so I'm gonna gather up my dogs and my stuff, go back home, and have some lunch, and then get back into reading, because I wanna finish this book today. So we'll see. update i'm pretty sure this book is over a thousand pages i was going off the initial goodreads listing i had it correct me if i'm wrong you guys probably know more about manacle than i do and it said it was like 800 something i am still only 60 percent of this book and i've been reading for almost 10 hours so i think it's over a thousand pages i think it's like an 1100 page book so i'm like over 600 pages into this book and i have 40 percent left but like it's still in the flashbacks which fine i just want i mean he did one more thing like i need the i'm so obsessed with you and need to protect you and save you and it will literally obliterate the world for you he's done that i think three times now twice sorry he's done that twice i need more i was like dying over the romance more so prior to the flashbacks is in the flashbacks it's just a very slow burn gradual thing and you could tell he was like so pained and obsessed with her in the present day when like it's so forbidden that like it doesn't feel as forbidden in the flashbacks so i'm liking the dynamics of the relationship like the taboo angsty part of the romance in the present day versus the flashbacks but we're still in flashbacks i've been in flashbacks for like 30 percent now and i don't know when we're gonna get out of it but it's still good i'm going along i'm like really invested in the story and i really like things that are happening i absolutely hate harry and ron like i detest them they are such horrible selfish people which is very frustrating it's been very interesting with the dark magic discussion because hermione really wants them to use dark magic and harry is just like adamantly against it and even like killing anybody i was like how can you win a war like that without killing anybody and so her they like paint hermione as this horrible person and really don't care about her it was just so sad after something happened everybody had someone to go to and hermione literally was left alone and nobody cared to look after her and she's the one who's bending over backwards to heal everybody and help them and save them and it's just it makes me so angry but uh, so many emotions with this book i'm really enjoying it and that's my update so far so i'm gonna go read more and update you once i've read some more i am 70 percent into this book i asked on um instagram how long people thought it was and they said it's over a thousand pages so i don't feel too bad about how slow i've been reading but the romance is just like all consuming and really good and the plot is picking up definitely but i have to keep on reminding myself we get to the present somehow so like i'm like they're gonna win they're gonna fight this war the good guys are gonna win we already know the answer to that based on where hermione is in the present day so i'm very nervous to see how this all happens because i know so many people are not there anymore so i'm very interested to see when we go back to the present though and i just really love how like desperately in love draco and hermione are so trying to be like not too spoilery i'm gonna read some more it says i have five hours left only 30 percent left oh this book is so long i am dead dying this 
what just happened? 73% in. How do we still have 27% left of this book? But I'm like, how do we get to the point where the present was when this just happened with Draco? And she literally was like, I will never forgive you for this. And he's like, I don't care. <gasps> now it's getting crazy. And I feel like I'm going to read this very quickly. I have a four hours and 20 minutes left for 27% of the book. But <laughs> this whole scene, I'm almost 80% in and I'm still freaking out. I feel like this last like 40% has been so good, especially with the bromance because like things are coming together and now they're like, what are we going to do? And I feel like deaths that happen hit so much harder if you're a fan of the series already because you either have already seen them die in the books or you saw them survive in the books and now certain people are dying in this book and you're just like, holy crap, that really hurts. So it's just really hard reading about these characters that you've already loved from the books seeing things happen to them after knowing like you knew certain things were going to happen but you were still in denial the whole time they were going to happen i'm interested to see what's going to happen next like i don't even know if this book has an ega i have no idea but again there's a very like desperate quality to their romance like they are so desperate to be together but they don't know if they can excuse all the dog hair all over me but this one just one is getting me all covered I'm gonna go keep on reading and hope I survive the last 20% of this book. My sister forced me to stop reading so we could watch an episode of Vampire Diaries together. <laughs> She's worked a lot lately. We have not been able to watch anything together in a while, so I did stop and watch an episode of Vampire Diaries. We had dinner. Now I am 82% in and I'm literally a ball of anxiety. Like, how am I gonna get through the last three hours of this book? Tell me how. I'm finally less than three hours left. So the end is in sight, but... Literally... <laughs> How am I supposed to survive reading the rest of this? Like, what the heck is going to happen? And then I just kept on thinking. I was like, has anybody ever actually told me they actually end up together? Like, is there logically a way for them to have an HEA or is he just going to die at the end? I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to finish. I've come upstairs. I told my sister I just need to finish this book in peace. Also because I don't know if I'm going to cry. There have been a few times where I've been on the verge of tears. I've been rooting like with my hand over my mouth multiple times or on my head like I can't look but I need to look kind of thing um I have 13% left I'm scared <laughs> I am so scared I don't know what's gonna happen I don't know I don't know I mean like I don't know if this is a spoiler now like with this on the cover is this a spoiler the whole time I don't know but I'm so nervous something just happened too with Lucius what is going to happen I have no idea but like I'm terrified so I'm going to read more and I will update you I will update you the way literally I like slapped my face I'm gonna need a spoiler right here they still have to cut off his arm they still have to cut off his arm Okay, tell me why the photo from chapter 70 something, the photo from chapter 73 is the one they use for the cover, for sure, spoiler. Oh my god. Now they're, there's still 10% left. Like what, what else is there to happen? Why do people cry at the end of this book? I'm terrified. I, can I just stop and pretend this is the end? <sighs> I thought I wouldn't cry. A little teary at the end. Um, I think I'm okay. I didn't think I would cry at the end, but thinking about it. Every time I think I'm okay, and I'm like, why would I cry? And then thinking about it, I guess I'm gonna cry more. And now, 
I don't know how I feel. I can talk. I don't know if to film this tomorrow. <laughs> Guess I'm giving it five stars. <laughs> okay. We'll see if I can talk. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I should just not film this until tomorrow, but I'm gonna film it today. <sighs> okay. I'm not crying because of the romance. It's just what I thought I would cry about. <sighs> this is so stupid. I would say the last, like, <laughs> the last chapter is what killed me about the end. I was getting annoyed with the last 10%. I am deaf. Oh, I can't even. So the last 10%, I was a little annoyed. I was expecting something horrible to happen. I was expecting some twists to happen. But it didn't. And I was like, well, this sucks. We got to that blog, and I'm not a fan of that blog. So I was like, oh, okay. So now we just get to see their daughter doing stuff, right? The book she opened. And seen that photo. Oh, that was just not fair. Okay, like I said before, that was not the ending I was expecting. I don't know why that hit so much harder than, like, I thought Draco was gonna die. The sacrifices they had to make. I read that thousand-page book in two days. There were just too many emotions. Just everything combined. Like, individually, things weren't that bad. I've been sitting here for ten minutes trying to put into words without crying how i felt about this book i mean like i feel like it has to be a five star read the way i'm reacting right i was a little bit annoyed about that the last 10 percent because i thought something like mind-blowing and drastic was gonna happen but i think that because that didn't happen it made the ending that much worse <sighs> like emotions wise because of the repercussion of everything that happened and oh, Draco I don't know if I can even reread that I was thinking as I was reading it and getting the flashbacks I was like oh my gosh it'd be really cool to reread the beginning to see like from Draco's perspective everything that happened like knowing what had happened and seeing things and catching them but I literally cannot breathe. My nose is clogged, but the romance was amazing, obviously. They were so obsessed with each other and so in love, and it was just an all-consuming soulmates kind of romance. Just, like, the desperation behind their actions was just soul-crushing, and Draco's intense love for Hermione literally would tear down the world for her. That's the kind of hero he is. I'm gonna get some spoilers here. I'm glad Jenny didn't die. Every time that he like obliterated people from Hermione, I was like, yes. But the fact that like, the fact that literally no one cares. I'm such an ugly crier. I'm so sorry. That's all I can say. <laughs> I can't continue talking about this. I'm so crying. I'm gonna go. <laughs> if you've read this, let me know your thoughts, I guess. Hi. Um, <laughs> it is the next day. I am a little bit more emotionally stable, so I thought I would come and chat about the book. So, <laughs> as you can tell, I was unwell yesterday. I have not stopped thinking about this book all day today. All day today. I had so many messages on Instagram. I'm just messaging people, chatting about it. This book. So, first of all, it's an epic romance. It's an absolute epic romance between Draco and Hermione, and literally, it's a whole thing where like you call I come like you need me I will literally drop everything and travel to the end of the earth to be with you he is obsessed Hermione at one point called him like a dragon because he is obsessive and possessive of things he cares about which is very 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 little in the world and his character was so interesting so we do learn a lot about him i am gonna get into spoilers here because i just like have to talk about it so spoilers are gonna come up here the way that his entire life was dedicated to avenging his mother and saving his mother like that was driving him the whole time to the point where he literally ruined his entire life for that like people said like that ending textbook makes me so angry 
and helpless and makes me want to cry again because like they're like he's almost as worse as Voldemort like he is literally the darkest worst wizard who ever lived and he's not and Draco and Hermione's daughter has to grow up with that knowledge that she cannot say anything they're like she was such a lively excited child but then once you put her in the real world she became so reserved and so scared that anything she could say could ruin their lives but she knows the truth and it's Oh my gosh, the romance was amazing, especially once you got to a lot of the parts that wrapped and wove together with the beginning. Like how, I do not know how this author wrote it. If you know, please let me know. Did she write the, pre the flashbacks first and then write the beginning chunk? I think that that's absolutely the correct way to read it is read the beginning present day, go back to the flashbacks and go back then to the present day. That hit so, so much harder. And now I want to go back and reread the beginning part where Hermione is taken from the prison and into the like breeding program because the things you learn about Draco and what he's saying and what he's doing. I saw a TikTok that was like, you didn't realize he was trying to make conversations that they had in the past again to see if she would remember. He's literally so in love with her. Oh my God, when his dad killed his wife and he planned it the whole time. <sighs> there were so many parts of this that I was just literally just like holding my mouth or holding my head because I'm like, what is gonna happen next? I cannot. I will say the last 10%, as I was reading, I was disappointed. I was like, this is just basically an extended epilogue. I really don't care like what the heck's happening. I expected something super traumatic to happen. I expected Draco to go back or like Hermione to like lose all of her memories, which is also already very traumatic that she lost a lot of the important things and that's how they to live together. But, and like the fact that Draco had built this entire thing just for Hermione, he didn't even consider himself into the equation because he thought he was gonna die. But I was like, no, they're just like happy hanging out. Obviously it's sad. That last sentence like obliterated me of the entire book. I was so upset. Like if that last chapter was not there, I probably would give this four stars because I was like, it's fine, it's nice, there's lots of slow parts. Like they're obviously building up the story because when we get to the flashbacks, I was like, this is really slowing down for me. We just like chopped off the romance and starting from square one. But that last chapter put everything into perspective for me. How angry I was at every single character in this book. How angry I was at them thinking, well, the light and love will win. No, it won't. No, it won't. And Hermione literally used dark magic to save Ron. And then Harry was all up on her about it. When she literally saved Ron's life. And she knew what it would take from her. <sighs> this book was amazing. That's all I want to say. I feel like I did not adequately talk about this book yesterday and I wanted to say that. So if you have read it, let me know. If you have any recommendations for other ones that I would love, let me know. I feel like I would still love a lot of other ones if they were very romantic. Like this one was, but it didn't super focus on the romance, if that makes sense. Like it really built a very strong romance, but most of the plot was building up other things. Let me know. That's all I have. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Hopefully I explained myself better this time. Epic romance. That last chapter sold the entire book for me. I don't recommend reading this in two days because it is emotionally traumatizing. But that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.